Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody. Uh, this week I'm going to be talking about Creo Distributed Batch. Uh, before I do that, a little bit of introductory material. Uh, so first of all, table contents. Um, I'm going to give a little introduction to myself and to PDS Vision. I'm then going to talk about the digital thread. I'll then get into distributed batch. Um, I'm going to talk about what distributed batch exactly is. I'm going to talk about what it can do. And I'm going to talk about how to uh, specifically use it. I'm then going to uh, get into a live demo where I'll walk you through doing a really simple uh, batch process in distributed batch. Then I will open it up to a Q&A. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, I would advise you to use the question and answer feature uh, in GoToWebinar. Um, if you submit questions, I will uh, try to keep looking at that throughout my presentation, but at the very least, I will see all your questions at the end, and um, I'll be sure to go through um, all those then. Um, so a tiny bit about myself. I've been with PDS Vision for about four years. I should have put that on the slide, but um, I've used Creo uh, pretty much every day since then. Before that, I have some experience uh, with AutoCAD and SolidWorks, about nine years in the CAD and simulation uh, space total. And I come from a mechanical engineering background. Um, at PDS Vision, I specialize in uh, Creo and simulation. Um, I'll uh, also spend a lot of time doing teaching, so I'll teach intro classes, advanced classes, etc. Uh, PDS Vision is a technology leader in the PTC uh, software realm. We are the first and I believe biggest global reseller. Um, our services include consulting, training, uh, implementation, uh, so upgrades, things like that, uh, cloud hosting, uh, and a help desk. As far as a uh, timeline of our company, you may know us as Boundary Systems. Um, so just to lay out the timeline really quick, we were founded in 2006. PDS Vision was founded in Sweden in 2008. Um, we expanded globally to South Africa in 2014. Um, in 2018, we were acquired by the PDS Vision Group from Sweden. So although we just changed our name at the first of the year, um, we've been a PDS Vision company for a while, um, and that's continued to expand to have quite a global uh, footprint, as you can see here. In addition to the PTC software we cover, which is pretty much all of PTC's uh, software, we also have found that certain other software built, fulfill a niche that PTC software often doesn't. So we offer these uh, software packages as well, uh, including Moldex 3D, eTrage, and KeyShots. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about something we refer to as the digital thread. Essentially, what this graphic is referring to is the various ways that you can use software in general to link up your company and uh, improve your designs. In the inner ring, we can see that that is mostly CAD and uh, simulation, technical publications, um, the kind of stuff that you think of when you think of PTC products. Um, going outward from there, we have bomb management, parts classification, et cetera, lots of stuff having to do with wind chill. Uh, going out a level from there, we have additive manufacturing, uh, cam manufacturing processes, uh, all of the, these kind of uh, automation type things. Uh, going out another level, we have cloud services, AR, IoT. Um, so this is things like automating an entire factory or hosting uh, all of your company's data in a cloud somewhere. Um, so uh, essentially what we're um, 
trying to do with this digital thread concept is highlight how we can link together our companies and our workflows and different areas to make uh, everything much more connected. So if I jump to this next slide, um, usually all of these different departments in your company are going to be separate departments. Uh, so your engineering team, your manufacturing team, your sales team, et cetera. Um, and uh, through this digital thread project that we've been doing, um, we are trying to show how we can link together these various departments. Um, we are doing digital thread webinars, which is why I, I mentioned this. Um, I believe we're doing one a month and we've done, I wanna say four or five so far. Um, these are uh, a little bit shorter. I think they're you know, 15, 20 minutes rather than uh, about an hour, but um, definitely tune into these if, you, um, if this interests you at all. Uh, as far as distributed batch specifically, I tried to outline where in the digital thread that kind of falls. I would put it mainly in CAD management and configuration automation. Um, definitely, this is a CAD management uh, type tool. Um, we're not actually going to be doing modeling in CAD, but we're going to be taking our CAD files and doing some kind of operation on them. Um, outside of, of Creo Parametric. So I consider this kind of CAD management. Uh, other realms that this might affect, uh, document management, this would more, more so be wind chill, but this is gonna play into that as well. Uh, project management, requirements management. So what is exactly distributed batch? Uh, distributed batch is an additional piece of software, essentially that's, that's downloaded with Creo Parametric. Um, this is a completely separate application from Creo Parametric. Uh, you're going to open it separately and it's going to let you run a process across multiple Creo parts or assemblies um, or drawings I should have put. Um, so some examples of that, um, if we have, for example, a hundred drawing files and we would like to export all of those to a PDF. Uh, clearly, that would take a lot of time to go into 100 drawing files in Creo Parametric and uh, plot those all as PDF. What we can do is we can use distributed batch. Um, this is essentially going to automate one process across all of those different drawings. Um, the main benefit being that you just have to set this up once and click run and uh, the action is going to be carried out across as many drawings, you know, hundreds potentially. Um, and you can at that point walk away from your computer. Uh, a license to use this software is included with design essentials. So that means that nowadays most people who are on a subscription do have access to distributed batch, um, even if they don't know it. Um, and it can be run with or without wind chill. So if you have, you know, 100 part files that you want to run a map key on in a wind chill directory, uh, that's completely fine. If you have them saved on your local hard drive, that's completely fine as well. Um, so that's the essence of distributed batch. It's a separate application and it's going to do something to uh, automatically to a whole bunch of files at once. And that's the, that's the benefit. Um, as far as specific capabilities of this, we can do plotting and printing, as I mentioned. We can import or export 2D and 3D data from supported interfaces. We can create shaded images of parts and assemblies. Um, so that's an image rather than a drawing. We can run model check across a whole bunch of different models. We can save Creo models from earlier versions into the latest version. So we can automatically pull a whole bunch of Creo files, uh, save them in Creo 9. And we can run map keys automatically. So um, if I want to, for example, create a new view in 100 different part files, I can just set up a map key, which automatically creates that view for me. And then I can use distributed batch to run that map key across you know, 100 parts. So how do we use Creo dbatch? First, we need to make sure the software is downloaded. 
Um, depending on what you did, if you uh, when you when you actually downloaded Creo Parametric the very first time on your computer, depending on if you did that properly, um, and depending on whether you were licensed for for distributed batch at the time, you may or may not actually have distributed batch, even if you have Creo Parametric. Um, this is a pretty easy fix. You just have to have the Creo Parametric install files. We're just going to run that setup again and be sure to download a distributed batch through that window. Um, so a lot of people don't have this, but you should be licensed for it. If you're on subscription, you're just going to have to get the uh, Creo install files and, and run through that again. Um, so at that point, we um, may need to create a custom config.pro file specifically for our, our export. Um, an example of that would be if I am exporting a or plotting a drawing to PDF, uh, I may want to create a config.pro that turns off my datum display. Um, also, map keys are stored in config.pro files as well. So uh, if we are running a map key, then we're going to have to create that map key and save it as a config.pro file. Um, certain commands in dbatch will require a config.pro, like the ones I just mentioned. Um, some commands will not. There are certain things that just don't require a config.pro file. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, step three, we can modify the TTD file as an optional step. Um, TTD file is the specific process we're going to be running. So for example, running a map key, that's a, that's a TTD file. Um, and th this will become a little bit more clear in my, my demo, hopefully. Uh, and finally, we'll run distributed batch. So uh, I'm now going to going to go ahead and show this stuff, um, what all of this means. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open distributed batch. Um, now, by default, this is going to be saved in your Creo uh, files. So I'm going to be doing this in Creo 9. Um, if I'm starting from scratch and I want to start using distributed batch, first thing I have to do is see if distributed batch is even on my computer. So I'm going to jump into this Creo 9 folder. Um, that's in your program files and PTC. I'm then going to jump into parametric and bin. And we'll notice that I have this PTC dbatch.bat in this folder. If I double click that, uh, I think I have to run it as admin. Yep. If I double click that, it'll open distributed batch. Um, as I mentioned, if you don't have this already, um, there are two things I, I would check. First, uh, make sure you're licensed for it. Um, you should be if you're on subscription. Uh, but if you're on a locked version of Creo 4, or Creo 3, something like that, it's possible you don't have a uh, license for it. Um, the second thing to do would be to get the Creo install files, so that original setup.exe. And we're just going to run that again and be sure to grab the um, Creo distributed batch in, a, in the checklist there to be sure it's installed. Um, you can also just do a Windows search over here. So if I just search distributed batch, uh, it's going to come up there too. All right, so um, how this interface works. Um, essentially, I'm going to add TTD files to this outline area on the left where it says untitled. Um, a TTD is going to be a command, something like um, run a map key, something like that. Uh, we can do multiple TTDs in sequence. Um, so uh, I can click new task group here. And this will let me select from all the different uh, tasks I can carry out here in distributed batch. Um, so we can see that we have various 3D exports. We have uh, 2D drawing AutoCAD exports, um, various CAD programs, um, neutral 3D export from Creo, shrink wrap faceted solid exports, 
Um, scrolling down, we have I just export JT part assembly exports. Uh, we have model check and run a map key. We can run a simulate study. Um, and if I go down to plot, we have a lot of different plotting options. Uh, the one we are going to be using today is PDF export, PDF DRW multi-page export. Um, it's just going to export a drawing to PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and click OK. And we'll see that that uh, task, that TTD, was added to my outline over here. Um, now these TTD files, they do, um, they do actually exist here in our files as well. So if I go to um, Creo 9 common files and then text, and I can find TTDs, uh, we'll notice that all of those different uh, commands in Creo Oh, sorry. Um, all these different TTDs um, are able to be opened as text files. So if we go to the one um, that I'm going to work with here, I open this. Um, we can see that this command is essentially coded here as a text file. Um, now, you'll probably not be doing any actual coding, making your own TTDs here. Um, but there are certain things that you may um, want to change. So for example, we'll notice uh, DPI 300. Um, if we wanted to edit that number, we could do that here and do a, a file save or a file save as and make um, you know our own version of this copy. So we could call it plot DRW to PDF 500 DPI or something like that and save this as a brand new TTD. Um, that brand new TTD would then be able to be used in, in dbatch. So um, takeaway here is that these these uh, tasks dbatch is carrying out, they are able to be opened and we can see the code and we can make little changes to it. Okay. Um, so now I'm I'm just going to jump to my uh, Creo drawing here. Um, so in my example, uh, I'm just going to be running this distributed batch on uh, one drawing file. Um, I believe that. So um, in this folder on my desktop called dbatch demo, um, I have a part and a drawing. Um, so that's what I've opened, just a single part um, and, the, the, you know, a drawing of that single part. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, go to my configuration editor here. And let's see. Um, I already actually created the config.pro um, that I'm going to use here. But essentially what I did is I just created a custom config.pro for this specific, um, this specific task. I turned my datum displays all off. Um, and I also have a search path that um, didn't get set up properly. That's, that's OK. Um, this config.pro, if I was doing a map key operation, this would have my map key in it, the one that I uh, you know, put into dbatch. And a lot of dbatch actions don't require config.pro. Um, so this, essentially, the, the fact that I hid those datums, um, the reason for that is that I'm doing this drawing export. Um, it's, it's optional in this case. If I didn't use that config.pro, the action would still work. The datums would just be displayed. OK. So uh, finally, going back to distributed batch, um, I can do a file save as here. And uh, this is not, I'm not saving it a TTD. I'm saving an actual batch file. 
So this is going to be a .dxc distributed batch file. So I can call this drawing plot or something. Okay. Uh, it seems to be a wind chill error, but I'm not using wind chill in this example, so I think that's I think that's no problem. Um, just really quick to show, if we were using wind chill, um, I would go to Tools Server Management here. Um, I would then connect to Boundary Wind Chill, enter my credentials. Um, if your wind chill server doesn't show up here, you just have to do File. Um, file or actually right click in here register new server that's how we do it but i'm not using wind chill um so that's not going to apply to me right now um now i got a question can we use creo and distributed batch at the same time um and i will address that now uh the answer is yes um there, there's no problem, just like there would be no problem with opening multiple versions of, or multiple files in Creo, uh, multiple instances of the same version of Creo, um, or just in the sense that I can open Creo 7 and Creo 8 on the same license at the same time. Uh, in the same way, there's no issue with using Creo parametric and distributed batch at the same time, at least in theory. Um, so to answer the question, can you use Creo and dbatch at the same time? The answer is yes. However, um, one caveat is that Creo Distributed Batch is actually going to be opening its own version of Creo in the backgrounds. Um, and that's why it's you know no problem, because as I said, you can have multiple Creos open on one license. Um, the problem comes in is that sometimes um, it can just not work. Um, sometimes you'll get an error in dbatch. And it'll be something like cannot open Creo, cannot open part in Creo. Um, if you do get that error, then I do recommend completely closing down Creo Parametric. Um, so kind of just to be safe, um, I would say that sometimes it's a good idea to close out a Creo. Um, but there's nothing requiring you to do that. And most of the time, it's going to work fine. All right. So how we actually set this up. Um, if you remember that I did, um, I opened distributed batch and I added a, a TTD, so a new task group here. Um, that then appeared here in my outline, and I have these little, uh, these four different little categories here. So first, I'm going to go to this top level PDF DRW multi page exports. Um, we'll see that the TTD file is listed here, the file path. Um, We'll remember that I opened that up in a uh, in a notepad, and we could make edits to this if we would like, or we could browse to a, a different TTD file. Um, now, this DSM standalone. Um, this is uh, what this essentially lets you do is it lets you um, carry out this operation across multiple computers. Um, what I mean by that is if I, for example, am running this distributed batch um across 500 drawings that is going to take hours and hours um i could cut that time in half by using two different computers um to work on it so i could say me and my coworker bill's computer um if we both put our computing powder towards this task it's going to go twice as fast um so that's what this option lets us do it lets us run this this action on multiple computers to make it go faster uh, by default, you're going to want to choose standalone, which just runs on your own computer. If you would like to set up um, this kind of computer sharing um, system, you're going to use a different software. You're going to use Creo Distributed Services Manager to set that up. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this uh, webinar. That's a topic for a different webinar. Um, but Essentially, that's what this does. Um, and if you wanted to set that up with multiple computers, you would use Creo Distributed Services Manager. All right, so I'm going to do standalone. I'll just run this on my computer. Um, this looks good uh, for now. So I'm going to jump to the Objects tab. 
Um, this is the thing that is going to be acted upon. So in this case, since I'm exporting drawings to PDFs, this is going to be drawing files. Um, so what I can do is I can add task group. Um, I can select specific folders or directories from Windchill um, if I'd like to use everything from that directory, essentially. Um, if I was using Windchill, uh, the directories would appear over here on the left. Um, I could browse through Windchill like I normally do. Um, in my case, I'm just browsing to that folder on my desktop, and I'm just going to select this drawing and OK. Um, we'll see that its status is shown as unsubmitted. Um, when I start running this process, it's going to turn to green, showing that it's in progress, and then to blue or red if it successfully uh, exports or if it fails. Uh, so next, I'm going to jump to configuration files. I mentioned that these are not always required. Um, in this case, the export drawing to PDF, it is optional. Um, I'm going to use this config.pro, though because I want to hide the datums in my finished products. Um, finally, I'm going to go to output. I can either choose my current working directory or the same as the source, which is what I'll uh, choose to just put it in that same folder. Or I can specify another directory or send to Windchill. OK, so this all looks good. Um, I should be good to go. The only problem I potentially foresee is that Creo is open in the background. And as I mentioned, that's something that has caused problems in the past. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and run this. So to do that, I'll right click and start. I can also schedule. Um, if I This can slow down my computer, especially if I'm running this across hundreds of items. Um, so I can always schedule it for a time that I'm not going to be doing anything. But um, this is just a single drawing. This should not take long. I'm just going to start it. Um, so I'll jump to objects. We'll see that. Well, I guess not yet. We don't see anything. But at some point, this orange is going to turn into a green um, for working. Sorry, my cat is on my keyboard. Uh, looks like we missed working, um, but it jumped right to complete. Uh, one in one process is completed, zero failures. Um, if I want to see a log file, uh, I can browse to this file path. So see Windows System 32 to this log file. Um, let's see. I don't even think I'm going to do that. It's just actually, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do it. We can do that. It's just going to say it completed successfully. Not really anything too interesting there, but I'll go ahead and pull it up. I'm going to go ahead and open this with Notepad. If I can even find Open with, there we go. Let's try that one more time. Sorry about that. This is so weird. It's it's giving me an error every time I hover, hover over open with. Really weird. Uh, let's try one more thing. Let's just go to Notepad. Open it that way.
All right, so I got it open. Um, it just says task name, TTD file. Um, and then it just says start of that this time. Um, it actually didn't even say it finished, um, interestingly enough. Uh, but it, if, if I ran into errors, it would give me them here. It would give me an error code. OK, so it completed. Um, so now I can just go and you know confirm that it actually worked. Uh, well, notice I do have a PDF in this folder. When I open it, um, looks good to me, no datums. So it did work properly. Um, pretty cool. Uh, so last thing, um, I'm just going to jump back to the uh, slideshow. Um, so before I open it up to questions, um, just wanted to mention that we are back to full training. Um, so we're back to either on-site, um, in-center, or virtual. Uh, we'll also now do hybrid classes. So we'll do um, partially virtual, partially in-person. Uh, if you're interested in classes, check out our website or email sales. OK, um, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up to um, two questions. Uh, so I already got one question that I addressed. Uh, that's no problem having Creo and dbatch open at the same time. Um, unless it is, unless it gives you an error in dbatch, in which case I would recommend closing Creo. Um, but there's no licensing issue there. Hmm. Uh, so I got another question that um, someone was able to set up and run, but got an error. Executing model task failed. There was a license error executing this task. Um, so specifically, the the error code here, the the 40, is important. So um, what we can do is we can put this into PTC support page. Um, so uh, essentially, I have no idea what that error was caused by uh, and that license error. Um, you shouldn't have been able to download distributed batch if you were not licensed for it. Um, but I guess you could have at some point lost your dbatch license. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the most likely explanation. So let's see if I can find anything here. Huh. It, so it does seem to be a distributed batch licensing error. Um, I, I uh, may have to look into this and see what exactly is going on here and how to change it. Looks like we may have to set uh, an environment variable um, to point to a license file. Um, I don't think I did this, though. Let me, let me see if I had to do this. I, I doubt it, but maybe I don't remember. Hmm, maybe I did. So um, I guess I might have done this at some point. Um, I would recommend trying this. Um, so it looks like I created a an environment variable at some point. Um, I, I don't know if it was for distributed batch or for something else. Um, this PTC underscore D underscore license underscore file. Um, this is pointing to a licensed server for me. So FlexNet uh, hosted on my own computer, 7788 at that computer name. 
Um, so this might be the cause of your issue. Um, I would uh, recommend just sending me an email though. So my email is, uh, I'll, I'll get it on the screen here. Um, and I can look into exactly what's going on with this licensing uh, issue. Um, if you just reach out to me at sbeaver at pdsvision.us. Um, I just don't want to spend too much time trying to figure that out. It does seem to be a licensing issue. Um, happy to jump on a call with you though, um, you know, to look at this in the future. Um, so next question, when running multiple items, dbatch runs only one at a time and only 10 at a time are working. When one is completed, it has to add one to the working operation. Is there a way to make this faster or work on, on more than one at a time? Um, so this is something that I've, I've messed with previously um, and I may not be able to just remember off the top of my head for uh, how exactly we do that. Um, I, I know that some firewalls can affect, um, essentially some firewalls can affect how, um, how many processes, batch processes can run at the same time, something like that. But I think there's also some kind of, uh, you know, it might be an environment variable or something else that we can set, um, you know, that value of how many can be pulled at once. Um, this is something again that, yeah, I've, I've actually ran into in the past. I just don't exactly remember. Um, so Michael, I'm, I, uh, I will reach out to you. I have your, I'll have your email address, um, or at least I can get that from GoToWebinar. Um, and I will reach out to you and address that uh, specifically after I do a little bit of uh, research, memory refreshing, et cetera. Um, there's definitely a way to mess with that. Um, I just don't exactly remember. All right, um, so I think that is all we've got for now. Um, Michael, I will email you about um, your question. Uh, anyone else, if you have any other uh, further questions on this, I can always be reached at sbeaver at pdsvision.us. Um, additional links that we have on here, um, sales questions, uh, you can give them training questions as well. Um, I have our, our website on here, pdsvision.us. Um, I want to say it's support. I might have actually put this on wrong. It might be help desk. It, no, it's support. It's support. Sorry. Um, this is our, our uh, help desk. Um, so if you go to support.pdsvision.us, um, that'll let you create an account and make a ticket with us. Um, we can have somebody reach out uh, to assist you. And lastly, we have our YouTube page still under our uh, previous name, Boundary Systems. Um, I would def definitely recommend checking that out. This webinar will be on there in a couple of days. Um, and we have a big catalog of past webinars going back, I think from like 2015, something like that on there as well. Um, okay, and uh, that's it. Thank you everybody so much. Hope you have a great rest of the week.